you will and can then agree with what Jesus says when it's written in your heart. Flesh is like grass. It just dies and withers away. But now until you get a revelation within your heart, you think that you have to be sufficient within yourself. And I was a most self-sufficient person. I did not need help from anybody in most things. I didn't need it. I didn't want it. I, In fact, I felt I didn't need it, period. And that was the one thing God began to tear out of me, was my own self-sufficiency. My own self-sufficiency. It wasn't easy. And that's where the church is today. Strong preachers are self-sufficient. That's how they get there. See, like verse 6, come on. God hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth. The letter is the law. But the Spirit giveth light. Let me say it again. God hath made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth light. Now, this verse clearly tells you that you can minister... You can minister the New Testament in death. You minister it by flesh or through flesh, and it will kill you. Able ministers of the New Testament, not of the flesh, but of the Spirit. And now, every one of us grew up having the New Testament minister to us through the flesh. There was little Holy Spirit in, well, let's not go there. There wasn't any Holy Spirit where I went to church. We will go there. They didn't ever even talk about the Holy Spirit. They must not have known there was one. If so, they didn't mention it. Anyway, now verse 7. If the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious. Now, what's that talking about? Verse 7 now. Come on. What's that talking about? What is that talking about? Let's talk about it a little bit here. We're at verse 7. If the ministration of death, written and engraven, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, they're talking about the Ten Commandments without any doubt, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with. See, when Moses came off the mountain, they couldn't even look at him. He'd been in the presence of God. He'd been in the presence of God. And God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger on the stone. Now, if that ministration is death, that's what this says. The law kills you. And Lord Jesus, have mercy on America and the world that they will see this today, that they that you set aside the old covenant, you set aside the Ten Commandments, which includes, you set aside the old covenant, which includes the Ten Commandments, and that they'll quit ministering death to your people in the church. If there's anything my heart cries for is for the human race to see, don't sit and let them teach you the old covenant, the Ten Commandments. They'll destroy you. Then he said, verse 8, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather or more glorious. If the ministration of the one written in stone was death, how much more shall this one be glorious? Verse 9, if the ministration of condemnation, and that's what the law does, condemns you, if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Notice the law brings condemnation. The gospel brings what? Righteousness. Every time. Verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. Now look at this. Verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious. He's speaking clearly here about that which was written and engraven in stones. For those of you that still want to cling on to the Ten Commandments. He says, if that which is done away is glorious. You see, the church, they'll say, well, God did away with all the law except the Ten Commandments. 
you'll run into all kinds of spirits. Then you'll find those that say God abolished the ceremonial law only. He abolished all the law, my dear brothers and sisters. And it's written here, but it's been in your heart. And some of you, you want to hang on to it. You want to believe that your heart's so hard with religion and you're so prideful that you absolutely resist that God did away with the Ten Commandments. Listen, people will fight you when you say it. If you don't, listen, if you don't think so, if you don't think so, look in the Bible. They tried to kill Paul for saying it. They hate it today. Now, that which is done away was glorious much more. That which remaineth is glorious. They Paul said then Paul said this verse, the twelfth verse, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Thanks be to God for Paul's plainness of speech. Amen. Now turn to Second Corinthians one. You really should go ahead and read the whole chapter. I've never talked this much around here. It's just never been God's purpose until now, but it is today, or shall I say it was today, but God taught me this just recently. I could not believe what I was reading in the epistle of the Corinthians, and let me tell you, I was somewhat influenced by people concerning Corinthians, that they were such a goofed up bunch of people that Paul had to write these epistles to them to straighten them out. But everybody else was okay. That's the way some view them too. <coughs> some say, some would say uh, these things are too controversial. The Corinthians are a bunch of flakes. Well, so are all other churches in the world. Get that straight. You're all a bunch of Corinthians. All of us are. Amen. So now if you can handle that, I'll get on a helicopter plane and fly out of here. Amen. You know, God didn't need helicopters to get Jesus out of town. Second Corinthians one eighteen. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yes and no. What was his word toward them? Well, turn over to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and where in ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again, and on the third day according to the scriptures. That's what they received. That's the word that he preached to them. What did we just see in the second epistles, third chapter? The gospel written in their hearts. Amen. Now, let's go back to 2 Corinthians 1.18. As God is true, our word toward you was not yes and no, or yea and nay. In other words, <clears throat> you can put it this way. Our gospel toward you was not yea and nay. Our gospel, verse 19 and 20, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you, that's the gospel, preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises, then people would pluck out the 20th verse. They'd take it right out. All the promises, all the promises, all the promises of God, all the promises are what? The gospel. That's what he's talking about. All the promises of God are the gospel. You know, they would say, if you have a need in your life, find the promises somewhere in the Bible and stand on them. I've seen <laughs> I've seen them put the Bible down and step on it and say, I'm standing on the promise. Well, you're confused. May God deliver you from it. Maybe the people that do that, if someone listening does, you should ask God to give you a revelation. Ask him to put the desire in your heart to really listen and obey him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, the church is, a lot of the church people are a bunch of blind folks and I know people think I'm critical, and I am, maybe. I don't even care 
whether, whether you think I am or not. Thanks be to God. I know this is God. And if the human race doesn't repent, I don't even know what's going to happen. You know, I'm not the judge. Thank God. I'm not the judge. Thank God. I'm not responsible for the human race. Now, I understand clearly how Moses used to say to God, these are your people. And God said, Moses, these are your people. And Moses said, no, God, these are your people. Well, I started out with this ministry telling God, these are your people. I was smart enough to see what Moses told God about his people, God's people. Moses said, God, your people. The human race belongs to God, not man, no man, no preacher, no teacher, no church membership, except God's church of Jesus Christ. If God said to me, Listen, if God said to me, like he said to Moses, these are your people, I would say too, no, God, these are your people. Now, I'm not putting you down. I just want to, <laughs> I just don't want you. You know why? Because I can't handle you. I do well to handle myself. I love you enough to tell you the truth. You know, <laughs> listen, You have you heard preachers go like my flock? I know you've heard of my parishioners. Well, bless your little heart. Why don't you give it back to Jesus? My brothers and sisters, I started out with this. God, these are your people. I remember when a church business opportunity came my way, and I knew it was not of God, so I turned it down. And Jesus said, keep on plowing. You're plowing in good ground. And I said, thank you, Lord, because if you hadn't have told me, I could not have told it because it was not obvious to me. I was just speaking the word every day, speaking the word, speaking the word, speaking the word, speaking the word. And then God, listen, God started the understanding. He opened, he started opening the understanding door to my heart. I'm not boasting. I'm just praising the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for plucking the weeds out of this ministry that you've entrusted to me to minister in Jesus' name. Well, all the promises, verse 20, all the gospel of God in Jesus are yea. And in him, amen, to the glory of God by us. You understand? So get it straight. When, when you... When you get this in your heart, you get a revelation of the gospel. The promises are yes. They're all yes. They're yes, whether they're in your heart or not. The promises are all yes. But when you get them in your heart, the yes will manifest. Yes, I agree with it. Yes, I believe it. Yes, I will obey it. Yes, it's mine. You know, Paul called this gospel his, you know. I used to read that and say, what do you mean your gospel? Well, it's, is this gospel yours? <laughs> well, it's mine. It's in my heart. God gave it to me. How many of you know that? Not about me, but about yourselves. Well, if you don't think this is your gospel, there's really kind of something wrong with you, you know. You know, I understand what Paul was saying. It was like he's the one that paid for this. You know, a lot of people, you know, I've heard them say, you know, Paul called it his gospel. I don't understand. Well, it's mine. It's inside me. Glory be to God. I carry it around and it works through me all the time. It's the nature of the Lord Jesus. Would you like to have that in you? Let's go back to 2 Peter verse 4. 2 Peter verse 4, whereby are given unto us are you exceedingly great and precious promises that by these, by these, by these what? These promises, these gospel promises, you might be a partaker. The word is have in common of the divine nature. Now, this is the most mind-boggling statement in the Bible to me, or one of them. Through the precious promises of the Lord Jesus gospel, you and I can have in common the gospel or the nature of Jesus. It's ours. See, it's ours. 